Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for January 17th, 2021. This is a time that we set aside to focus our full attention upon God and all of the good things that God is doing in our world and with us. In light of all of the events of the past year and weeks, it may not seem like God is with us, but make no mistake, Jesus Christ is God's seal upon his promise. Jesus Christ is the very presence of God among us, and Jesus Christ is with us. In good times and bad, we give praise to God. The Apostle Paul tells us to give thanks in all things. We are indeed growing weary of this pandemic. We're growing weary of the constant division in our world. But when we live and follow the way of Christ, we can make a difference. We indeed can touch lives. We can bring hope. We can be the presence of hope in the world because of our hope in Jesus Christ. So as we worship today, let us open up our hearts. Let us open up our lives to reflect the good news of Jesus Christ into our homes, into our workplaces, and into our world. It is a privilege to serve God in all times and all situations because God is with us, loving us and filling us with his grace. Praise be to God. Let us open our worship with prayer. God of all the universe, you are all powerful, you are all mighty, you are all loving and all gracious. In these difficult times, help us to lean not on our own understanding, but to lean upon you and you alone. Help us, Lord, to follow the way of Christ and help us in this time of worship to recognize your presence and to recognize that we are worshiping together with our brothers and sisters, even in this strange method of online worship. We thank you, Lord, for all of your gifts. We thank you for gathering us together. We thank you for the minds that made it possible for us to connect together, even when we cannot be in each other's presence. You, Lord, are indeed so amazingly wonderful. You are beyond our comprehension. But help us today in this time of worship to comprehend you even a little bit. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us now sing our opening hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought.
Now let us gather our hearts together, gather our minds together, and share with our Lord those things that weigh upon us, the worries, the fears, the hurts, the injustices. And let us give it all to God, knowing that in God's hands, all things will be well. Let us remember today especially to pray for those who are sick as the virus continues to rage. Let us pray for those who are overwhelmed and stressed out, trying to care for the sick and the dying. Let us pray for those who are weary and growing tired of the sacrifices that we have to make in order to protect others. Let us pray also for Connie and her family, Bonnie and her family, Dale, Tony, Linda, Tom and Bev, Jim and Judy, Greg, Judy, Don, Susie, Bill, Buddy, Brenda, and Gina, and Gloria. Let us now pray. Loving Father, there is so much heartache and misery, so much anger and sin, so much separation and mistrust in our world today, so much illness, so much fatigue. Help us, Lord, help me to let you be my strength, to trust you to be the sovereign God, to trust your will, to trust your grace, to trust your love as shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. For all of these that we have mentioned and all of the other people known only to you, we pray for your sustaining spirit. We pray for your healing grace. We pray for your comforting presence to be known to us and to all. We ask, Lord, that you motivate us to be faithful, to be powerful, to be strong, to be weak, and in all things to be loving, so that through our imperfect lives, we might bring hope to the hopeless, that we might bring comfort to the hurting, that we might bring healing to those who are broken. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the opportunity to work through you by your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to live, who showed us how to love, and who prayed for us and instructed us in the way of prayer. And so we pray now, as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord, speaking to your heart, through the words of John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? 
Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching him, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Help us today, Lord, to hear your call upon our lives. Empower us to answer that call. And send us out into the world to share the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news that we hear in your scripture today with our neighbors, with our friends, with our family, with our enemies, with all that we encounter through what we say and what we do. All for the sake of your kingdom that you call us to build through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're in the season after Epiphany. Last Sunday was Epiphany Sunday. And last Sunday we talked about the meaning of the word Epiphany that it's a realization, a dawning awareness of something. In the case of the, the epiphany in the church, it's the realization that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, the one come to save us and to call us. And the season after epiphany is a time that the church has historically set aside to focus on how we can answer that call, to build ourselves up through the word, through prayer, and through service, to form our lives, to let God form our lives into faithful followers of Jesus Christ. So today we look at one of the key scriptures that talks about being called and following Christ. The call of the apostles. And in particular, this scripture focuses on Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel, though it doesn't say in our scripture today, but Nathaniel was from Cana. Cana was the site of Jesus' first miracle, where he turned water into wine at the wedding. And Cana, in Jesus' day, was about eight miles, give or take, from Nazareth. And at that time, Nazareth was a very tiny little village. Scholars tell us that it likely had a population of about 200. So roughly less than half the size of Hannah. But Cana was a little bit bigger town. A little more cosmopolitan. A little more sophisticated. And people in Cana tended to look at people at in Nazareth as kind of country bumpkins, hicks. They were less than. And so when Nathaniel hears that Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, is being identified by Philip as the Messiah, the one come to redeem Israel, Nathaniel scoffs because could anything good come from Nazareth? Now that may be a sentiment that we can relate to. I'm pretty sure most of us would ask the question, can anything good come from Washington? But we really also need to ask the question, can anything good come from the Middle East? Can anything good come from China? And even more to the point, can anything good come from us? Can anything good come from me? 
And the answer to that question is really that it's a mixed bag. By the power of God, by the grace of God's Holy Spirit working in us, everybody is capable of good. But as humans who are fallen sinners, we're all also capable of great evil. This mixed bag means that you never really know what to expect from another. Sometimes people really surprise us and we expect them to be not good. And we will see some sign, some evidence that they have a heart, that they have some goodness in them. And indeed, Scripture witnesses to us that the image of God is planted in every single person who has ever been created. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, God activates that image of God, even in people that don't believe in God. That's one of the core beliefs of John Wesley and the Methodist movement that rose up from his leadership and teaching, that the Holy Spirit is at work everywhere, even or maybe even especially in places that we least expect. And I'd like to venture to say if we were really honest with ourselves, we would be a bit surprised that the good that we can display also. And honesty is at the core of the message of this passage of Scripture for us today. Because Jesus, upon seeing Nathanael, says, Now here is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Other versions use the word guile. Here is an Israelite without guile. I really like the word guile better because it has a little more subtlety. It connotes things of more depth than just deceit and honesty. Somebody who is without guile is somebody who does not hide who they are. And you can see the kind of person they are. They don't put on airs. They don't try to appear better than they are. They aren't hypocrites. What you see is what you get, for good or bad. Because not having guile doesn't mean that you're perfect. Not having guile means that you let it all hang out. And when Jesus saw Nathaniel, he recognizes in Nathaniel that what you see is what you get. This is an important characteristic for Jesus because in Jesus, we also see one who is without God. For in Jesus Christ, what we see is what we get. The way that Jesus lived his life, the words that he spoke, the ministry that he did, all point to the truth of who Jesus Christ was and is. We can look at the scriptures, we can look at the Gospels and see through Jesus' words and actions exactly who he was. Jesus Christ was one who, when tempted in the desert, resisted temptation doesn't tell us that Jesus did not have to wrestle with those temptations. In fact, it's very clear that Jesus did. But because of who Jesus is, he made the faithful choice to rebuff Satan in the wilderness. When Jesus encountered sinners, he showed us who he is by giving them grace and calling them to a more faithful and fulfilling life. Jesus Christ forgave sinners. He forgave the woman caught in adultery. He forgave the Pharisees who got it so wrong. He forgave the priests. He forgave those who wronged him. Jesus Christ cleansed people 
of their illnesses. He restored sight to the blind. He helped the lame to walk. Jesus Christ cast out those demonic forces that had a grip on people's lives. In Jesus Christ, we see the truth of God. We see the power of God. We see the grace of God. We see the love of God. Jesus Christ was what he lived. In him, there was no God. On the cross, Jesus Christ showed who he was by forgiving those who crucified him, by being concerned about the welfare of his mother and his friend, such that he gave his mother Mary to John to look after and gave John to be the one who would care for his mother. In Jesus Christ, on the cross, we see one who suffered terribly but kept his faith. In Jesus Christ on the cross, we see one who suffered for being righteous. And the most important way that we can see the truth of Jesus Christ was in the empty tomb on Easter morning. Because the truth of Jesus Christ is that sin and evil and death will not have victory over God. That God has victory over all of the things that trouble us to this day. The evil and the sin in the world. The evil and the sin in our own lives. Jesus Christ, the one in whom there was truly no God, shows us through his resurrection. God's answer to our problem, that it is life and life eternal, that it is an empty tomb. And we all live our lives in many ways like we are entombed. That's become especially clear to us in this time of social distancing. When the church has had to, out of love and faithfulness, refrain from in-person worship. We are entombed in our homes. We are entombed in our attitudes. We are entombed in all of those things that would separate us from God but also all of those things that separate us from one another. But Jesus Christ had victory over the tomb. He has victory over death, and he has victory over our sin. Jesus Christ has victory over the sins of the whole world. His grace is given universally to all. To all who will accept it, they can embrace that grace. They can embrace Christ. But they need people like Philip and Peter and John and Nathaniel and you and me to go into the world and live our lives without God so that people can see through our words and our actions the truth of our hearts. And the truth of our hearts is still a mixed bag. We still have dark areas. We still have sin that claims. But through the grace of Jesus Christ, through the victory of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are being cleansed of all that would separate us from God and all that separates us from one another. Our attitudes, our biases, our philosophies, our politics, the hurts that we have experienced in the world, the fears that we carry around, the anxieties, the angers. But we can live our lives as an open book when we trust Jesus Christ. And when people see how we are being healed, how we are being made whole, they can see for themselves the truth of Jesus Christ. 
the best witness we will ever have is to be people without guile, who are honest about our own shortcomings, but who are even more honest about our faith and hope in Jesus Christ, the one who defeated death and sin on the cross. We have a lot of opportunities in the world today to show the truth of Jesus Christ, to show our faith in Christ, to confess our sins, and to seek to live a new and more powerful way. I pray that you know how much God loves you. I pray that you know that Jesus Christ has indeed made you and me a new creation. I pray that we all commit ourselves today to give our lives to Christ more fully and to trust in the sanctifying grace of God through his Holy Spirit to lead us, to help us to grow, to grow in love, to grow in grace, and to grow in faithful following the way of Christ. Ministering to a broken world and giving hope in a world that so desperately needs hope right now. Our hope is not found in what happens in Washington. Our hope is not found in what happens at the ballot box. Our hope is not found even in getting to gather in person and worship again. Our hope is found in the Holy Spirit of Christ and the Jesus who lives within us and in our faithful response to Jesus Christ. Let us open our hearts and our lives so that in us there is no God. Amen. To live the call this week, simply trust God in all of those situations that bring us anxiety, that cause us worry, that make us angry, that make us feel like we are different from other people. Let us open our hearts and our lives to recognize that we are all sinners, all standing in need of the grace of Christ, and that the grace of Christ is sufficient to cover everything, all sins, ours and others. And let us commit ourselves to do everything that we can to become the kind of people who will faithfully follow Jesus Christ in the ministry, the mission of going into all the world and proclaiming the good news of Christ. As we are now halfway through the month of January and hoping praying that soon the pandemic will subside enough that we can consider worshiping in person. Take this time to renew your own faith, to have a revival in your own heart, and pray and ponder and think about and listen for how God is speaking to you and to us as a church, for how we can use this time to grow more faithful, to grow more open, to be more committed to reaching out into the world, to bring more people into the life-saving, life-giving, life-affirming relationship with Jesus Christ. We have an opportunity to rethink how we can be church, to imagine, no, even not imagine, to listen for how God is calling us to be more faithful, more fruitful, more effective, 
more gracious, more loving. And we can do none of those things on our own power. And we can do none of those things with our own cleverness, with our own intelligence, not even with our own hearts. But it's only when we are fully connected to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We can change our community. We can change our world. We can change people's lives and bring hope and healing and grace and love, bringing about the kingdom of God. It's a tall order. But it's the order that Christ gave us. We were called not to save ourselves alone, but to go into the world, to save the world, to bring people to Jesus Christ. Or even more accurately, to bring Jesus Christ to people. And we can do that when we live our lives with no guide, being vulnerable to others, showing our own struggles, but also showing our own hope and faith in the midst of the struggles that we have. Praise be to God that we have a Savior. Praise be to God that he has given us his Holy Spirit to empower us, to lead us, to encourage us. This week, pray for the Holy Spirit. This week, pray for all of those that give you problems in your heart because it is there in your heart where the transformation of the world begins. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we say with our mouths how much we believe in your power and yet far too often we live our lives as if it all depended on us. Help us to see, Lord, your presence in all situations. Help us to follow your lead. Help us to follow Jesus Christ and live as Christ lived. Help us, Lord, to live lives that display the truth of Christ and through Christ, the truth of you, our Father. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you for all of your good gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now sing our closing hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord.
as you go about your lives, curtailed as they may be. Go into the world convinced of the power of the Holy Spirit, convinced of the grace of Jesus Christ, convinced of the love of our precious Father, and live our lives in the ways that show who God is. Let us have no guide. So go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit into the world and live lives that prove the good news of Jesus Christ. Have a blessed week. Amen. Amen.